emotive waves always unfold in the same direction of the dominant trend and their goal is to make progress. They are easy to recognize because of their sustained and violent moves. Within the motive swing, wave 2 never retraces more than 100% of wave 1. Wave 4 never retraces more than 100% of wave 3 and wave 3 will always surpass wave 1. As Elliot stated, wave 3 mustn't be the shortest motive wave. Therefore, as long as it travels within a higher percentage than either wave 1 or 5, the rule is fulfilled. There are three types of motive waves which are destined to make progress in a trend. Impulses, ending and leading diagonals. An impulse is the most common motive wave in which wave 4 never overlaps with wave 1 or enters its territory. In an impulse, one of the motive subwaves, 1, 3 or 5, would almost always present an extension and the sequence is always 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, without any exceptions. The rule mentioned earlier governs all motive waves and should never be disregarded in order to achieve a greater practical utility, resulting in correct counting or labeling. Extensions represent those sustained rallies with exaggerated subdivisions in which one of the motive subwaves themselves present a prolonged move. Only one extension per each impulse is accepted and this provides a very useful guide on expected lengths of upcoming waves. For example, if wave 3 has the same length as wave 1, then we could most probably expect an extension in wave 5, or if wave 3 extends, then wave 5 should resemble wave 1 as duration and length. Extensions also occur within extensions, making this the subwave extension of the larger degree extension. Traders these days often look for the free of freeze. Wave free is typically and most commonly the extended wave, hence the reason why wave traders tend to form the habit of labeling the extension in its early stages of development. A good way to spot an extension would be when wave 3 is proven to be unacceptable, shorter than wave 1, or when the retracement enters wave 1's territory, in which case it would need to be relabeled as the first subwave in the extension itself. Following an exaggerated extension, a phenomenon called truncation may occur in and only in the last fifth wave, when it does not move beyond the end of wave 3. R. N. Elliott referred to it as failure, but in modern technical analysis, traders call it truncation or truncated fifth. This phenomenon rarely happens and it represents the contouring side's power after the exaggerated extension is showing exhaustion signs accompanied by a sustained divergence. Such truncation cannot be accurately seen in advance and can only be validated by the presumption that wave 5 contains the impulsive structure. The diagonal does not present an extension, therefore it is not an impulse. However, it is a motive wave, but a special one. This structure presents the characteristics of an impulse, where corrective legs do not retrace more than 100% of the previous moves in favor of the main trend, but the other two rules are broken. Wave 3 could reflect as the shortest swing, rarely, and wave 4 always overlaps with wave 1. It's a hybrid with motive and corrective features. Diagonals take either 333333 or 535335 forms in their structures, depending on their locations, and are usually signs of drastic changes in trends. They take a wedge shape within two converging lines and are used by traders as reversal confirmations. The ending diagonal is a pattern that occurs when the preceding move has gone too far too fast, as Elliot put it. This pattern can be found mostly in the fifth wave position at the end of an impulse, and it usually signals dramatic change of price action direction due to the present divergences. It can also be located in an ABC corrective structure, but only in the final C wave. 
An ending diagonal is indicating exhaustion of the larger movement, hence the reason why it can be found at the termination points of larger patterns. An ending diagonal which is rising is a bearish sign, and one which is declining is a bullish sign. Characteristics Free, 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 free structure with all five swings subdividing into zigzags ABC takes a wedge shape within two converging lines. Wave 4 overlaps with wave 1 but not exceeding the start of wave 2. Wave 1 is the longest swing and wave 3 cannot be shorter than wave 5. Located in the fifth wave position of an impulse or in a C wave within an ABC correction. Wave 5 usually breaks the converging line before the change. Reversal pattern which is usually accompanied by a noticeable divergence. An ending diagonal can also take an expanding shape in which the lines are diverging. All other characteristics apply as an ending diagonal except for the fact that wave 3 could be the shortest swing and wave 5 is the strongest. The leading diagonal is also a pullback pattern with continuation characteristics which present five overlapping and contracting impulses within a wedged shape converging lines. A leading diagonal is usually a sign of a deep retracement and it can be found in a wave 1 position or in a wave A within an ABC correction. Unlike the ending diagonal, besides the free 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 structure, it can also take a 5 free 5 free 5 form, in which only wave 2 and 4 subdivide as zigzags ABC. Characteristics free 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 or 5 free 5 free 5 structure with waves 2 and 4 subdividing into zigzags ABC takes a wedge shape within two converging lines. Wave 1 is the longest swing and wave 3 cannot be shorter than wave 5. Wave 4 overlaps with wave 1 and presents a retracement much smaller than wave 2. Continuation pattern which is usually followed by a deep pullback located in the first wave position of an impulse or in an A wave within an ABC correction.